If you spot this strange sign on the side of the road, chances are you're inside the Berlin Ichthyosaur State Park, a well-preserved mining camp that also houses the world's greatest collection of ichthyosaur fossils, most of which have been left in the ground, protected by structures built over them. It's hard to grasp just how big they were until you compare a life-size likeness of one of these behemoths to, say, a burly human visitor. You wouldn't want to be swimming in the water and see one coming up to you? Uh, definitely not. They had 36 conical shaped teeth in each jaw. And could eat pretty much anything, I would imagine. When they saw it and swam after it, if they could catch it, they would eat it. State Park Ranger Mike Dinauer says about 10,000 people a year make the trek to Berlin to check out the undisputed heavyweight champ of the prehistoric seas. Millions of years ago, all of this was covered by water. It's possible that natural upheavals caused the Nevada ichthyosaurs to be trapped here, explaining why so many fossils were found around Berlin. These mountains are about 30 million years old, and the ichthyosaurs were actually uplifted with the mountains. It's hard to re realize it's real, that it was real, that it swam in the ocean. Much closer to home, the Nevada State Museum at Lorenzi Park houses the largest collection of excavated ichthyosaur parts, cataloged inside dozens of boxes, a treasure trove for paleontologists. This is some of the original stuff that was found in This is uh, the this Berlin. is the stuff. This, this is, is the... this is the type fossil of Shonosaurus popularis. So if anybody wants to know what it looks like, they come and look at these. Ichthyosaurs are not exclusive to Nevada. They're found on every continent except Antarctica. And it was an ichthyosaur found in another country that set off a debate about the Silver State's ichthyosaurs. A paleontologist looked at one of these huge flippers and decided Nevada's Shonosaurus popularis must have been an underwater flyer moving through the ocean like birds move through the air. In scientific circles, that's a mighty bold theory, an idea certain to set off heated debate and it did. This Discovery Channel video shows the common notion of an ichthyosaur swimming like a normal fish, using its tail for propulsion and the flippers for steering. Proponents of the flippers as wings theory are sticking to their guns, but the majority of scientists have come down on the side of the swimmers, not flyers version. I think something that's this shape probably didn't fly through the water. When we're talking about flying through the water, we're talking about the sort of movement that penguins do, where they're using their flippers to actually propel them. If you think about a penguin, they don't have much tail. Despite how enormous these flippers are, they're not that big when compared to the entire ichthyosaur. And that's why Barbara Adams says it wouldn't be a very efficient way to travel. I'm here in the water. This specimen did fly through the water, but it had much larger flippers and more of them. Even if the flipper mystery is solved, there's plenty of other ichthyosaur oddities to ponder. Was it essentially the biggest eye around? Yes, and um, this, this is sort of a clay model. The miners who searched for ore around Berlin yeah, didn't know what these uh, petrified vertebrae were, but found them convenient nonetheless. The miners in, around the Berlin area used to take, find these and they'd use them for dinner plates and doorstops. One thing that isn't debatable, whether they flew or swam, 225 million years ago, the ichthyosaur had no equal.